Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use Garage Band to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I'm doing something kind of crazy. I have 47 shortcuts and tricks to show you, and I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. These shortcuts and tricks can save you so much time. So by learning them, every time you're working in GarageBand, you're going to feel more comfortable, you're going to move around faster, which ultimately, in my opinion, in my experience, gets you better results and just helps you record and enjoy the process more. So these are super helpful. Now, as I said, I have 47 of them, but I don't want you to worry about writing them down. So I've taken all of them and I've put them into a guide. In fact, this is what I'm calling the ultimate GarageBand guide. It's brand new and it's going to walk through everything you need to know from the first time you open GarageBand until you are exporting your final mastered song. Super, super cool. There's a link in the description below where you can pick it up completely free. And I have all these shortcuts in that guide. So you can reference back to this anytime you need. If you're just like, how did he do that option click thingy that was so helpful? You can quickly look them up in this guide completely free. So be sure to grab it from the link in the description below, but let's go and jump into GarageBand and start looking at some shortcuts. All right, first up we have session navigation, starting with opening and closing the smart control window with B on the keyboard. The smart control window is where you access all your plugins. So for mixing, you'll have your EQ on here, for example, and you'll open this probably a hundred times in a session. So opening and closing it quickly with B is super helpful. You will also edit your drum mixer window here, Really, really helpful window. The second is opening up your editor window here with E. This is where you can change up, you know, perfect your little notes on your MIDI, or if you're working on a drummer, this is where you can tweak those parts. Or if you're working with audio, you can look super closely and see exactly what's happening with your audio that you just recorded. Really helpful. So E to open and close the editor window there. And then we have Y. This opens up our library. Now this is where you're gonna find all of your sounds for your keyboards and things like that, any sort of software instrument or your drum kit. This is also with the GarageBand drummer where you'll pick your different drummers and your sounds for the GarageBand drummer. So that's Y on the keyboard to open and close that. And then we have O to open and close our loop browser. The loop browser is super powerful and you can just search in here for different elements. In fact, all the percussion in this song is just loops that I dropped in and tweaked to work in this song. So the loop browser is O. You can open and close that really quickly with O on the keyboard. Next up, we have showing and hiding the arrangement track. This is Command Shift A on the keyboard. The arrangement track up here is super cool. It allows us to literally write out the different arrangement parts of our song so we can quickly see, okay, this is chorus one. Okay, now I'm in chorus two. I'm in the bridge here. It's super, super fast. So that's Shift Command A. Then if you have any sort of tempo change in your song, you can do Shift Command T and that brings up the tempo track. This is how you can shift around the tempo of your song if you need it to change at any point. So Shift Command T will open and close that. Then we have Command K. This is, opens up musical typing. So if you just need to play a couple notes really quickly, instead of pulling out a MIDI keyboard or writing them in by hand, you can just play them on your keyboard. This is super cool. Right, so very, very cool. So that's Command K on the keyboard. And then we have pinch in and out like you would on your iPhone or something or your iPad. We can use that to zoom in and out. I use this all the time, obviously. So you'll see me just kind of flying around in the session, zooming in and out. We can do that with pinching in and out. We can also zoom in by holding option on the keyboard and scrolling to the left. So if you can scroll on a trackpad or if you have a mouse that scrolls left and right, scrolling left will zoom in, scrolling right will zoom out. So I just hold option on the keyboard and then I can scroll. Sometimes I, I prefer that over pinching. And then we have K turns on and off the metronome. So right now, the metronome will play here. You can see the metronome engage up there. If I hit K, it will turn it off. So if you want to stop it halfway into your recording, you can just quickly hit K. Or if you want to enable the count in for your recordings, you can hit Shift K. That will turn on this count in button. So Shift K does that. And finally, we have toggle on and off the follow playhead function. This is the button next to one. You'll see it engage and disengage up here. This is if you want your session to follow with your playhead, where it just moves with it, keeps that centered on screen. Or if you don't, if you want to stay looking at what you're looking at, even if this moves on, you can turn that off and on really quickly right there with the button next to the number one. All right, next up we have our transport controls. This is all our play, pause, record, back, forward, start from the beginning, all those controls. Now, first up, we just have play and stop with the space bar. So if I just hit the space bar, it will play and stop the song. And then we have R, which will automatically start playing and recording at the same time. If I just hit R on this track, it will start recording on whichever track you currently have selected or recorded enabled. 
So we'll undo that. And then we have period to move forward one measure. So you can see here, we can move forward one measure at a time with period. I can go back one measure at a time with comma. That's really cool. And I can go to the very beginning of the session by hitting return on the keyboard. That will take me to the very, very beginning of the session. So if I'm all the way here, just hit return, I go all the way back to the beginning. And then we have C to enable the cycle region. So if you look up here, that turns on when I hit C on the keyboard. And it's just gonna loop that section. So now every time I hit play with the space bar, it's gonna start in the same place. Am I annoying you yet? And we have a really cool one that I bet you didn't know. I just learned this from a band guide student the other day. And that is if you select a region and hold shift and then hit space bar, it will start playing wherever that region starts. So even if you have a cycle region here, you can just listen to the start of that region. So if I want to go all the way back here to wherever this kibasa is coming in, I can hit shift and space bar and it will start playing just that section, right? Super cool. All right, next up we have shortcuts and tricks related to the track, starting with option T on the keyboard to customize your track header. So if you need to change out the buttons here, let's say you wanna add the freeze lock button, you can put that on. Let's say you wanna turn off input monitoring buttons so you can customize what all is shown right there. Super, super cool. Then we have S on the keyboard, which is gonna solo your selected track. M on your keyboard will mute your selected track. And then we have up arrow, which will move up your selected track. So if you wanna just quickly solo a bunch of tracks, you can go up and just solo each one quickly. Same thing with unsoloing, you can go down and unsolo all the ones you just soloed. So you just go back and forth with S and the up and down arrow button on the keyboard. You can solo really quickly that way, but you can also solo quickly by clicking solo on one track and dragging over tracks. Every track you drag over is going to also solo. Same thing goes with mute. If I click here and drag down, I can mute all the tracks I drag over super fast. Even record enable actually works with any of these. Then we have solo safe, which will keep a track soloed even when you solo other tracks. So if you hold control on the keyboard and click solo on a track, if you zoom way in there, you'll see there's a little red line that goes over that track. So if I put this on all my drums, now no matter what I solo, the drums will stay solo. So if I wanna solo this kibasa here that's not even playing in this section, or this bass track, it will keep the drums soloed in addition to those tracks without me having to individually solo all the drum tracks. This can be really helpful if you wanna just always hear the drums to check your timing as you're working on recording guitar or something like that. All right, next up we have create a new track with option, command, and in. That's gonna bring up this window where we can create a new track. But we can also create a new track if you want to have the same kind of track. Let's say I just want an audio track, same as this Kabasa track. I can just hit command D and it's gonna duplicate that track without the audio regions, but with any sort of settings that I've set in here. So that can be really helpful if you're working on the same kind of track or recording a bunch of vocal tracks. I can just hit command D as I'm recording my vocals to have the same exact settings that I've set on that vocal track. So command D to duplicate a track without the audio regions. Then we have option click and drag. And this is cool because it actually duplicates the track and all the audio on it. So now all the audio regions are here, plus all of your plugins and all your settings are all there. So you've just quickly duplicated everything about that track in a option click and drag in one quick second. And finally, for tracks, we have shift command and M. This is going to show or hide your master track. So if you see, I have a master track down here. This is one track where all of your audio runs through and whether or not you can see it, it is there and all of your audio is running through it. So if I hold command shift and M, I can show or hide this track. And what's really cool is you can actually automate this track so that it can come up and down at different points in the song, adding a little bit more energy, a little bit more volume as the song progresses, and then you can do a fade out at the end. All right, next up we have shortcuts related to regions. Now regions are just these little pieces of audio, or if we're working on a software instrument track, the software instrument or drummer, it's the little region there. Each of those is what's called a region. First up, if you wanna select all the regions in your song, you just hit Command A, and it's gonna select every region throughout your entire song. Super cool. And then if you want to split this, let's say I just wanted to shorten the end of all these guitars right here. I can select all of these and hit Command T, and that's going to split any selected regions at the point of our playhead. So this is what's called the playhead. You can set that there, and I can just split all of those right there at the playhead. Super cool. And then let's say I wanted to, to copy all those regions. I can hit Command C and that will copy all of those selected regions. And then I can go further here and I can hit Command V and that's going to paste all the selected regions. I can also delete any selected regions by hitting Delete or with 
Command X. Command X is actually really cool because it has dual purpose. Let's say I wanted to del delete this region from right here. I can hit Command X, that's gonna delete it, but it actually copies it while it deletes it. So now if I wanted to go over here and paste it, I can hit Command V and I can automatically paste that. So it deletes and copies in one fell swoop, super cool. And then we have Option, click and drag. This is really cool. If I hold Option and click and drag this, it will copy it to wherever I drag it to. I can even drag it across tracks if I wanted to drag it down here. Super fast, super easy, copy and paste in like one button. And you can do it for multiple regions. So if I hold, select all these and hold Option, I can drag all of these over. Really cool. Next up is something wild, and that is that you can actually pitch shift up a region of audio. So let's find a synth here. Let's say I wanted to pitch shift this synth up. Let me bring the volume up here. If I hold option on the keyboard and click arrow up, I can actually shift it up a semitone at a time. So you see here where it says plus two semitones. So I'm shifting up one semitone at a time. So I can keep going with this all the way up to 12. All of a sudden it's now an octave higher, right? I think I can even go all the way up to 24. It starts to sound a little bit weird. Oh, you can just keep going. I don't think I've ever pushed the boundaries on this. You can go up to three octaves higher. That's crazy. Similarly, if we hold option and arrow down, we can go down in semitone. So if I wanted to go way down, we could actually go an octave down here or probably down a couple octaves if we wanted. Right, pretty cool. So that's option, arrow up and arrow down. And then finally, we have join regions by hitting command J. Now this one is really cool. Let's say I just wanna take all these regions right here and put them into one. I can hit command J, it's gonna prompt me non-contiguous audio regions require creation of a new audio file, which means that you will not have access to tweak it if you've messed anything up in the way that you've cut up the region. So be careful with this because once you've done it, you can't undo it. So we'll hit create here. And then that's going to put them all into one region, which is really, really cool, right? I'll undo it. You can undo it if it's the last thing you did by hitting command Z, which we'll talk about in a second, but it can be really cool. If you just want to clean up your session, I can select all these here, hit command J. It will put them into one region and you can actually do this across tracks too. So let's say uh, you've split out your drums and then you realize you don't want your drums to be split out. So for example, here I have the tom split out across two tracks. If I select all of my regions here and hit command J, it puts all those MIDI files into one quick MIDI file. So if you wanted to record piano where you're doing the top hand in one recording and then the bottom hand in another recording and then jam them together, you can do that with Command J. All right, next up we have automation shortcuts and tricks. Automation is where you are having GarageBand tell your tracks to move around throughout the mix. So if I hit A, it will bring up automation. That's first and foremost. Next up, we can actually use something called fine control. So this is where, let's say I have this vocal automated here as we can see right so I have the volume coming up and down on keywords and phrases just to really tweak it and perfect it in the mix let's say I need to make a really really small change well if I hold control on the keyboard while pulling this point up it turns it into fine control now I can set really, really small increments. If I'm not holding control, look at how much it moves by with just really, really small increments. I'm not moving my mouse any more than I was just a second ago, but it's moving the automation way more. So if you want really precise automation, hold control on your keyboard, and then that will give you what's called fine control on your automation. All right, and finally, I just have a few general ones. These are ones I use all the time and you probably will too. First up is option plus click. If you hold option, when you click on something, it will reset it to its original parameter. So if I hold option and click on these EQ moves, it's just gonna put them back down where it was. Super fast, super helpful. You can do this on just about anything. If I do it on a pan position, you can see over here, I have this pan to the right. If I hold option and click on it, it's gonna pan it back up to the center. If I hold option and click on this volume, it's gonna bring it back up to zero. So I use that one all the time. Next up, we have Command Z. You'll use this all the time. This is undo. Now, frustratingly, Command Z does not undo audio changes. I don't really understand why, but it won't undo any sort of pan or volume changes. It also won't undo the things we just did with our EQ here. So if I open that EQ back up, it's not gonna undo those moves. But where it can be really, really helpful is let's say you uh, accidentally pitch shift up a synth 33 semitones. 
uh, and you want to undo that, if you hit Command Z, it's going to undo it a lot faster than you having to manually undo it. Or let's say you delete something and you want to undo that, you can hit Command Z, it's going to undo it. Let's say you delete something undo it and then realize, no, I actually did want to delete that. You can hit Command, Shift, and Z. That will redo it. So if you want to redo something after you've just undone it, so again, we'll delete this, undo, hit Command, Shift, Z. It will redo the delete, right? So that can be really helpful as well. You'll never know. Sometimes you will think you want to undo something and realize, no, I did actually mean to do that. That can be helpful too. And finally, we have Control Click. Now, this is really cool. If you just hold Control on your keyboard and click on anything, it's going to bring up the options if applicable. So, for example, here, if I wanted to rename this region so it's just easier for me to see, I could name this Synth Number one, and now I can see that super clearly on the region name as I'm moving throughout my session. I could also hold control and click over here and it brings up some other options like, for example, track color. So if I want to change this track color to be neon green, I can do that with this. And then as I just go up and down on my tracks, I can change all these to neon green if I want to, right? So control click last, but definitely not least. Okay, that's it for me. I have 47 tips and tricks here. Again, you can download the guide at the link in the description below and access these anytime you want. Just quickly reference it and it'll take you back to every single one of these so you can do these anytime you need to in your sessions. They're super helpful. Learn them. Have this guide to reference as you're learning them. It's really going to help you out. Now, before we go, I want to hear from you. Did I miss any? Do you know of any shortcuts or tricks that are really helpful that you use a a lot. I definitely can't think of any others that I'm aware of, but if you know of any, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Let me know. Or if any one of these was particularly helpful to you, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear that as well. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.